one heartbeat away from the presidency, not a single vote cast in my name. Democracy is so overrated. They sound like plots straight out of the hit Netflix show House of Cards. 2014 has started off with one case. A Philadelphia lawmaker is facing criminal charges tonight. Investigators say state representative Jose Miranda concocted a scheme to funnel thousands of dollars to his sister. After another, the two term Democratic senator from Montebello is charged in a 24 count felony indictment. After another of political corruption bringing powerful politicians to their knees. In Florida, the New York Times documented we had three of our mayors. Arrested on corruption charges in, in just one month. Uh, that was last year, and, and Florida is gaining a reputation as a corruption capital in, in, in the U.S. Most recently, California State Senator Ron Calderon was charged with 24 counts of fraud, conspiracy, money laundering, and helping file false tax returns after accepting $100,000 in exchange for favors and also facilitating a $500 million health care fraud scheme. Despite the evidence and even getting caught in an FBI sting, Calderon has pled not guilty. They felt they were a world away. They operate that way. And now in the legal system, they think they're above it as well. And that's why the plea, they think a technicality or a loophole or some, somebody maybe won't testify or a piece of paperwork, you know, they, they still feel above it. Also in California, State Senator Roderick Wright was found guilty of all eight criminal counts of perjury and voter fraud last month. Prosecutors say Wright pretended to live in a rental property just so he can run for Senate in that district. State Republicans tried to expel him from office but failed to garner enough votes. He is now on a paid leave of absence until his sentencing. Meanwhile, in Ohio, State Representative Pete Beck is facing 69 charges of fraud, theft, perjury, receiving stolen goods, and engaging in a pattern of corrupt behavior. Prosecutors say he funneled money to his campaign and also a local church that authorities say operates more like a cult. Beck pleaded not guilty and is even seeking re-election. Things aren't much better across the country. A first-of-its-kind integrity investigation that analyzed transparency, accountability, and anti-corruption mechanisms gave 26 states failing grades, and not a single state received an A. With rampant corruption across the country, it's no wonder why people are becoming more wary of the politicians they put in office. Congressional approval ratings are at a dismal 13 percent, and trust in the government is near record lows. You have the millennial generation grown up to distrust government heavily. You have the baby boomers who are reigniting their mistrust of government to the levels that they haven't since they were protesting since the 60s, so it's across the board. It's a mentality. Some states like Florida are making progress to crack down on corruption. The nonpartisan Integrity Florida group is working on reforming ethics by helping craft transparency, accountability, and finance laws. Our group came together in our third year of operations. We began traveling the state, building public support for ethics reform, and thankfully our lawmakers took action in a bipartisan way after more than three decades passing the most comprehensive ethics reform bill that Florida has seen uh, since uh, the 1970s. But there's still a long way to go. Could the media help and expose these a lot more? Sure. Could people vote more and make a real big impact? Absolutely. There's a lot more that could be done, but at least it's starting. In the end, it's up to the public and the press to demand accountability if they don't want a series like the House of Cards. For those of us climbing to the top of the food chain, there can be no mercy. To become more fact than fiction. In Washington, Megan Lopez, RT.